Hi there. Um, I'm incredibly humbled to be up here. Um, I just want to say I am such a great, um, I'm so proud to be part of the Bloomberg Philanthropies um, board and what Antha is, and her team are doing is remarkable, as is everyone in this room. So I'm just going to get started. I'm sorry, you're going to have to look at the images because that's what I do. As an artist, can I get you to look at the world in a way that you're not thinking of, like the Chesapeake Bay folded up a wall in Washington, D.C. for the Renwick because I liken my art to ground you and make you more aware of where you are in your surroundings. So take the California Academy of Sciences, asked me to do an artwork. I ended up with a wire landscape. You can now eat lunch and understand the terrain of the topography above and below sea level at the San Francisco Bay. What I was really doing as I got this commission was to start what is missing. So opposite this terrace, I put in my first permanent piece for what would become a memorial dedicated to bringing awareness about species loss, linking it to to habitat loss, and again, linking it to climate change. So it asks the question, what if a memorial could jump form? What if it could be in as many places like water it's invited in? From a handheld exhibition, you catch a screen, to the idea that what we're losing in, the, in biodiversity is astounding. We're in our sixth extinction in the planet's history and human alteration of the habitat and climate change will be the largest drivers. But as an artist, I try to get you to think of it in terms that you're not thinking of, the scale of species, the abundance of species. Again, how can we protect it if we don't even see it as existing? So today, just briefly, these are forms it's taken. We start with an idea called green print. What if we could, as an artist, reimagine the world, plausible future scenarios? So I'm just going to leave you with food for thoughts of what we're doing. Focusing on that almost 50% of all emissions is caused by land use changes, agriculture, forestry, pollution. So what if we could tackle both? I call it saving two birds with one tree, reduce emissions, and protect species by restoring habitats. So we all know this one, eat less meat, huge driver. But maybe you won't know that if you get a, a 20% less meat, and that's the equivalent pasture land you'd reserve, that's equivalent to all the protected areas in North America and 50% in South America. So how can I, as an artist, get you to rethink the scale of what seems to be almost an impossible task and make it something a little bit more accessible. For instance, this is something you might not know, speaking of eating. If we practice regenerative no-till agriculture, according to Rodale, we could absorb almost 40% of all CO2 emissions. So what we eat and how we grow it becomes a huge part of the equation. So as an artist, what can I do? I'm not trying to compete with the environmentalists. I'm just trying to get us to rethink it. What if we all lived at the population density of Manhattan? How much space would 7 billion people take up? The answer is the state of Colorado. So is this a question of population alone, or is it more a question of land use and resource consumption? And of course, could we re-envision what the world could look like by densifying and making our cities the key, because again, of course, 70% of all emissions comes from them. Can we rearrange the human footprint? So again, part of Greenprint, which we're in the process of doing, is going around and citing best case practices. And what if we applied those best case practices? That would be equivalent to taking 46% of CO2 emissions off the planet. We don't need to wait for new technology. We are doing it. We're practicing it in our cities, in our countries around the world. But I had to leave you with a couple food for thoughts because we love running money. If the World Economic Forum says it would take $700 billion annually to curb climate change, by the way, look at what we're spending $700 billion on. You could take the weight loss industry and the bottled water industry. Or you could take narcotic drugs and meetings in the U.S. or alcohol or cigarettes not to mention defense. And my question is, why can't defense include defense of the planet? So, a couple things. Just food for thought again. For every million dollars spent, 
You can get 6.9 jobs in oil and gas, 5.2 jobs in coal, or you can get 20 to 40 jobs in national parks. Or better yet, for all our cities facing rising sea levels, the amount of money and jobs created by restoring our wetlands, which happen to absorb three times as much carbon as a tropical forest, is huge. And I think I'm clicked out. So this is, I'm going to leave it with this. Invite nature into your cities. And if you live on a coast, the cheapest way to protect from storm surges is with natural whether it's a coral reef, an oyster reef, seaweed beds, mangrove forest, invite nature in. Thank you.